Okay, I'm about to enter the inside of the Blue Miner Farm. I think I heard something. I think I heard the sound of testing. What's up guys? Welcome to another video. This is Charlie Lim. Today I'm back at the Blue Miner Farm because I want to find out how the water cooling inside the Blue Miner works. Last time we didn't get to open the miner. So today I specifically asked Mr. Zhang, the owner of the Blue Miner, to make sure that we can open the box today. And also I would be interested to find out if Mr. Zhang is still having some of his miners running because today is after Ethereum merch. Is he still mining? Oh, I should say, is he still testing according to Mr. DJ Mines? That's gonna be interesting because after the Ethereum merge, Ethereum can no longer be mineable and all of the GPUs have to be turned off, which is a big pity. And I saw Red Panda Mining and DJ Mines, both of them have turned off their GPU miners. And also today, I'm gonna sit down with Mr. John and ask him several different questions regarding the blue miner itself and also his take regarding mining and cryptocurrency as a whole after the Ethereum merge. I think that's gonna be an interesting interview. Okay, without any further ado, let me enter the Blue Miner Farm and find out about the full story. Okay, Mr. Zhang is for the moment busy at a meeting. I'm going to have the colleague of the owner of the Blue Miner to show me what's inside the Blue Miner. And after I check out the Blue Miner water cooling, I'm going to sit down with Mr. Zhang and have that interview. Okay, I'm about to enter the inside of the Blue Miner Farm. I think I heard something. I think I heard the sound of testing. Oh. Okay, according to Mr. Zhang, he says he still is having over 100 blue miners actually working. Okay, this is absolutely incredible. I think last time when I was here, I saw only like 10 or 20 blue miners. But today, I think we saw approximately 50 to 60 of them. Okay, let me touch the blue miner itself to see if it's really cool. Okay, I actually think it's not really cool. This is still feels a little bit hot. Maybe I really should touch some Apollo mini miners to see <laughs> the temperature. I remember one of my customers that bought an Apollo V1 mini classic from me said the mini miner is very hot. Are you using any of these mini miners for Ethereum Classic? Tell us about your experience regarding the cooling of the miner. I think in one of my previous videos, I said the blue miner felt like a refrigerator. I think I have to retract that comment because um, that day I was in the office and that office was equipped with AC. But anyway, I do feel very warm uh, with the blue miner when I touch it on the top, but it's not like too hot to, to make my hands like hurt or make me feel like I want to take my hands off the miner. So I just want to be very objective with you regarding the cooling, the actual cooling, when the blue miners are in a farm, not in the house, it's a farm. Okay, Mr. Zhang actually told me today the blue miner sample has already been opened up in advance for me to take the video for. Okay, this young man is uh, the little brother of Mr. Zhang. Uh, his name is Mr. Gao. So he just uh, did me a very wonderful introduction about the water cooling inside the blue miner. Okay, with Mr. Gao's introduction, the water cooling inside the blue miner is actually uh, using the same system as the CPU water cooling inside a traditional desktop. So I don't know if that counts as some kind of creative design, but that's exactly how it works. There is a like a very giant or thick rectangular uh, water box. I want to open this to see the real water in here. So this round circle over here is also part of the water cooling system. The water will be going through these black tubes. The water will go and travel for some distance to cool the chipsets and it will go back to the main water box. So the water inside the miner is never lessening. It will never shrink. There is no evaporation. This is called water cooling with inner circulation. I would really need two blue miners, one with the water cooling inside, one without to compare the difference. Okay, I just asked Mr. Gao if I can take a look of the hashing performance and to see the pooling information of these miners, blue miners outside. Okay, we can see a total of uh, almost 36 Giga hash. Right now we can see 61 miners over here. And we turned off another 81. These are turned off. 
because this miner will be shipped up. And we can see some of those miners are performing above 700 mega hash, some around 500, some around 600. 23 miners of them are hashing at 563 to 588. And the second place is uh, 588 to 612, 15 of them. But these are the miners that, uh, that have just been turned on. Okay, I just asked him, Mr. Gao, you have been mining with all of these blue miners before you ship them to the customers. Is that really true? So he told me these miners have only arrived in this place for uh, three to five days. So uh, you can call this mining or you can call this testing, but that's exactly what they've been doing. After a short while, they're going to ship out a few blue miners. Yeah, I'm going to be all straight with you, open with you. I don't want to hide anything from you. And I know uh, even Bitmain or Goshiao must have been doing a lot of testing you know with the miners before shipping out especially with the miner of e9 which is uh, i think is a big trap or it could be easily mistaken as a trap if it's not because it's only when the ethereum merge is coming soon then the bitmain said oh we have the e9 the legendary miner ready but for the blue mining company i think they are quite honest or maybe it's just because when their blue mine is ready it's also drawing very close to the ethereum merge at least they didn't announce their miner like one year or two years ago, like uh, Bitman did. At least uh, they didn't announce this miner like uh, too long before the actual miner's delivery. Okay, after I get to understand how the water cooling inside the blue miner works, let me go over these blue miners again to experience the cooling effect again. So this is the power supply on the top of the miners. This is where it feels very, very hot or the hottest. But the wing over here is actually quite okay. Not too hot. Over here, we're closer to the sun, so the miners feel more hot. Oh, this one is super, super hot. The wind on this side is hotter. So this is uh, should be the heat sink. Oh, this is very hot. This one is okay. Maybe it's only been turned off for just a very short time. This one is off, so it doesn't feel hot at all. Okay, I know Ethereum mining is dead and Ethereum Classic is struggling. But for today's video, I'm not really promoting for this miner. I'm just showing you how the water cooling inside the miner works. I hope it can be interesting to you. Right now, I would pretty much look like a joker if I'm saying, hey, we have a bunch of Ethereum Classic miners to sell because the crash is really big. Like just in a matter of days, the end miner E9, the legendary king of ESH mining, has dropped by thousands of dollars. So it is really not advisable to order any of these E9 miners. I don't know when EDC will be profitable again. Let's all cross our fingers and pray for mining and pray for all the miners. Okay, I hope right now the owner of the blue miner factory is not busy at the moment so I can talk with him to do an interview.